as strong influences. Are there other people that um, spring to mind that have, that were um, strong early days to develop yourself? I think all, you know a lot of my mates and I mentioned Jerry Martin I before. Had another friend Peter Lambeth, Viv Romito. I'm going to miss a few here, and uh, I know they they were probably the ones that were like my uh, closest friends, and I can't think of others. And I, I, I but yeah, they, they, they were the ones really. I mean, we hung around together, and we trained, and we always did things together, and you know, carpooled together to events, and uh, you know, played footy together at the same footy clubs, and. They were really good mates and uh, they were the reason, you know, we went, you know, I went as far as I did, you know, whether it was cricket or tennis or whatever, we played basketball, we just went hard. And then I had, of course, my best mate, Sash, and I, how could I forget Sash? He became my best mate and, uh, yeah, I, you know, when I was playing AFL footy, he was one of my greatest supporters as well and he was fitter than me. So even though I was playing AFL footy, he could run like crazy. So, you know, often uh, off-season or in between that Christmas period, we'd go for runs and he'd just push me and he was always by my side. So he was another great influence for me. The fact that you didn't start weights, but you did a lot of high-intensity, speed-based, bodyweight stuff and built your power is also good for young footballers to listen to. If you want to get faster, you've got to train fast. 100%. I agree with you. And so I always say to people too, just be wary of weights. But young kids want to get there and start doing heavy weights because they look at people I didn't really touch weights properly until I was almost 19. Yeah, and so, you know, you can do all that body weight stuff. You've got plyometrics. You can even do, okay, maybe lighter weights or whatever you need to do with, it, you know, power and all that. Yes, you know, isolated movements and that to look good. If you want to look on the, good on the beach, no problem. I enjoyed that too. We need a little bit of that. Don't get me wrong. What did um, sports psychologists, what was sort of, as an AFL player, like it's quite common now to clubs have a sports psychologist, but. Back then, was that ahead of its time or was that common practice for, for players to seek working on their mental game? I dare say ahead of its time. David Park and the club said, you know, do you want to go and see a sports psychologist? I said, yeah, anything to make me play, you know, whatever it takes. So I went to see him. It was just fantastic. I never used a diary before then. He said, Kuda, get your diary. You're going to buy a diary and you're going to start doing daily activities because, you know, I was sitting around at home, lazing around. The, the, the day would just go by and not achieve much. So I started and he said, you've got to start ringing people. If they're calling you, you've got to ring people back. So I was like ringing in there, go for a swim, do my run, you know, whatever it was, I just panned down. He goes, at the end of the day, you're going to tick, tick, tick. You're going to write at the top and highlight it. I can, I will. You just watch me. And I highlighted it. Every time you go to training, you've got to pick one thing. If it's marking tonight, you're going to go there with the intentions of mark, 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 vice like grip. You're not going to miss a mark. And your whole training is going to be focused on that. I was like, okay. I'm pretty shocking for nerves before a game. So is there anything that you do to sort of sort of get the nerves out of the way for a big game? Good on you, Lucas, mate. Thank you for that question. Good to see you there. Um, I don't know, man. Like, my brother always said it too when it comes to big occasion. I was always there and producing my best. Even as a junior athlete, every time I went to big champs or national champs, I always somehow produced my personal best. At those times, I think I thrived on the big occasion. In terms of nervous, probably the most nervous I ever was was the grand final, AFL grand final, where I felt like almost like I just had no energy walking into that ground at MCG. Luckily, I had a good mate, Ange Christu, who was a larrick, and he, he was the complete opposite of me. He, he had to be like free, and so he didn't want to overthink about the game. I had to be there. I had to visualise the game. I had to make sure that this mind was spot on. And then uh, I remember just having a bit of a kick and a bit of a laugh with him. And as soon as I started to laugh or whatever, I just relaxed that little bit more. So don't ever put pressure. Whatever the outcome is, yeah. it is. And if you put too much pressure on yourself, you usually, the, the game's really hard. But if you go there and say, mate, I'm just going to tackle, I'm going to chase, I'm going to hit him hard. And you do all those little things, the rest of it unfolds. And if it's not your day, it's not your day. We've got Kane Irvin. Um, he's written, what's most important skill as a midfielder? I think nowadays, obviously, you run, I mean, the running, you've got to be able to run. Yeah, the, the fitness part, and people don't even realise, so even my son that plays basketball, I'm like, man, you still, you've, got to have, you've got to have fitness, you know. The fitness is the key. When I trained, when I trained harder, the game was easier. So I made training harder than what the game was. So coming to the game, the game was easier. And I could be equally as strong as a, as a player, and I could be – Equally as you know, fast or whatever. But if you're not as fit as them, they will be stronger than you. 
and they'll outrun you and obviously, you know, defeat you. Your fitness is the key to everything, no matter how strong. Well, you'll see big bulky guys come out and play footy, but if you can outrun them because they're not as fit, all of a sudden their strength becomes their weakness because once they're tired, mate, you can push them over and they're done and dusted. So, And we've got a pre-game routine, Kane's written. My Did you have a pre-game routine? Oh my god, man! I retired 14 years ago. Like, uh, I can't. my pre-game routine, I think I used to just sleep in a bit. I always visualised what I had to do. I didn't really eat too much food. Um, I always had that ball in my hand, and and that ball even the night before, man. I, the night before, in all honesty, I used to sit in my room for a good 20, 30 minutes and just visualise what I had to do. Listen to music, pretend that I was playing the game, and I had the ball in my hands, just in the dark, and just throwing it up, and just got used to it like that. So that was sort of my preparation towards the game. I never really went out the night before, in all honesty. Important quality for a captain. You're also an AFL captain as well. Um, so on leadership, what do you think are some important qualities? Lead by example, number one, you know, work hard, train hard, be a support, you know, put belief into the team. They're all the things, you know, some some guys don't realise how good they can be. Um, you know, in times of struggle, man, you've got, you've got to stand tall and be brave. That's uh, leadership qualities. And even, you know, off the field, 